All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Marvel Future Fight video. And for today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Athena because she's the character that I've been getting the most requests about. Like, how to unlock Athena? Is Athena good for World Boss Legend? Is Athena as good as Gilgamesh for PvP? What can she do? Is she going to be ABX meta? Is she going to replace Scarlet Witch? So many questions. And the one that I get hit with the most is how do I get her? Because I guess a lot of y'all seen the movie and she's the character that you guys like the most. So some of you guys who are new players come into the game. You're like, listen, I want her. Let me know how to get her right away. I got bad news for you, man, because uh, <laughs> you're going to you're going to need to shell out a lot of crystals if you want to get this character. So basically, long story short. If you want to unlock Vina, you have to go through and you have to complete all of the other epic quests for all of the Eternals. So you got to do Cersei, you got to do Icarus, you got to do Kingo, you got to do Gilgamesh, you got to do them all, my guy. And Gilgamesh and Makari, these two right here, you got to pay crystals for them. 4,400 crystals apiece. Now you do get some crystals back, so that's good and both characters are top tier so it's not like you're building bad characters in order to get to your queen your idol your lover whatever you want to classify her as because a lot of you guys love tina i haven't seen the movie personally but i'm a fan of angelina jolie so yeah i'm looking forward to playing with tina but basically after you complete those other five epic quests in their entirety which each of them will take you at least one day the um deluxe package characters they'll take you two days minimum Right, so in total, you're looking at a week minimum to complete these five missions, and then you gotta jump over here and then you gotta do this. You gotta start up this quest for Athena. You're gonna unlock her right away at one star, and then you just basically gotta go through her quests just like the other characters, and you build her up this way. Now, after unlocking the mission for Athena, you're going to get access to Broken Harmony, which allows you to farm brains and blades. And this will allow you to acquire biometrics for Athena. However, if you rely on simply the biometrics from here, it is going to take you weeks in order to get the character to six star, let alone get her gears up to 20 and tier to her because you will need to tier to her yourself. So do keep that in mind. So for me, I used a six star mega rank up ticket on her because I have those in abundance. For you guys, if you have twos, three, fours, five and six star tickets, use that on the character because you are going to need to rank her up manually. Additionally, you will need to do her gears by yourself. OK, the game is not going to get her gears to 25 for you. You are going to need to push her gears up to 25. A uh, key piece of advice I want to give you guys here is just like with Icarus, if you get Tina to level 70 before you get to a certain portion of the epic quest, the game will actually give you over a thousand biometrics for the character. So for example, this mission right here, it says that my reward for completing shock and awe three times is going to be a level 68 Tina. However, my Athena is already level 70. So what's going to happen here is the game is going to give me over 200 biometrics for the character, which is really, really good. So if you want to speed up getting her uniform to mythic, this is a good thing for you to do. What you can do is once you get her to level 62 via the quest, you then come over here and then you just rank her up to level 70 just like you would with any other character so it really comes down to do you have the black antimatter the chaos normstone and all those other materials and would you rather spend those so you can get Thena's uniform to mythic faster if you don't feel the need to rush to get her uniform to mythic then that is completely fine just do the epic quest and let the epic quest rank her up for you. That's going to save you some gold, some CCF, black antimatter, chaos, storm swords, whatever you usually use to get characters ranked up to 70. Okay. And then you can just slowly farm her biometrics from blades and brains or brains and blades. So for me, I didn't want to wait and I didn't want to use any um, uniform upgrade tickets on her. So I'm just going to do it this way. And you can see within one day, I already have enough 
to get her to legendary tomorrow after reset i'll be able to play shock and awe again and i should be able to finish this quest because the quest for athena just like with gilgamesh and makari it takes two days simply because of the fact that it requires that you play the deluxe missions for both of these characters so do keep that in mind so heroes reunited this thing right here you're going to need to play three times against makari and three times against gilgamesh so if you finish the mission for gilgamesh and start thena in the same day then you will actually get stuck on thena for one day so it is what it is so unfortunately i won't be able to show you guys tier three gameplay with thena today but nonetheless i do want to show you guys how she performs a little bit at tier two we don't generally do tier two content on the game anymore because of the nature of the game and where we at but since you guys are so eager to see her i want to take her for a spin and then tomorrow we can deep dive into the character and have some fun with her definitely going to try out the base kit as well so look out for that because i think she looks absolutely stunning and i prefer this look over this one so it's a bit of a bummer that i can't get the stats from the uniform and then play her like this that marvel if you're watching please take some of the systems from your other games like seven deadly sins or marvel future revolution those games actually allow you to equip uniforms or costumes and keep the appearance of another uniform or costume it's such a underrated but amazing feature that i've been hoping to see in this game for so long all right we're jumping into world boss ultimate against proxima for a little tier two showcase don't want to bore you guys to death talking about uh, athena here to be honest when i saw her on the live stream i thought she was going to be impossible to be played with a regular proc but actually that's not the case this is a regular damage proc on her, and she's landing the procs quite consistently. Pop, pop, pop. The only problem I have with this character is whatever dev decided um, they weren't going to give this character a heal, I'm not too sure what kind of drugs they were on, but um, that kind of sucks. Because for World Boss Legend, um, yeah, she's going to take a lot of damage and she's going to die. For Ultimate, it doesn't really matter, like... Only thing that's really gonna hit you is some purple attacks occasionally, but she kills really, really fast. Right, because she's a self-buffing lead. You can use her with White Fox, you can use her with Cersei. She's quite strong because she has native pierce in her kit. But man, you need a heal for World Boss Legend. Maybe they were only designing her with ABX in mind to replace Scarlet Witch. I'm not too sure. But we'll have to wait and see when um Universal Superhero Day rolls around. Also, I'm not too sure why they decided that they weren't going to give her any ignore dodge in her base kit and they were going to make it so that if you want ignore dodge you have to get her artifact well i do know why they did that come on money money it's all about the money it's all about the money so she take a little bit of damage there and she has no way to heal i'm not too sure why they're creating characters in 2021 going into 2022 that can't heal that just doesn't make any sense to me, especially a character that is locked behind not one, but two deluxe packages. The most expensive character in the game. And she doesn't even have one of the most fundamentally um, um, useful skills or abilities, rather, in the game. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, every character coming out in 2021 or 2022 needs to have a way to recover HP, whether it's lifesteal based on damage dealt, whether it's something based on damage taken, or just a passive ability that kicks in, right? Why is she the only Eternal that cannot heal? But also by that logic, why is um, Gilgamesh the only Eternal that does not have the leadership passive? There's a lot of questions I have for these guys. Now she might be looking a little off to you guys here, but it's just because she doesn't have any ignore dodge. I gave her a little bit on her obelisk, but she has no ignore dodge in her kit otherwise, which kind of sucks. Oof. Almost missed the proc there. You can see she's quite proc friendly. I'm just using a regular 140 proc on her, and she's very, very much so proc friendly. And I, I wanted to show this to you guys because on stream, it really looked as though you were going to have a hard time procking with her consistently, but I haven't missed any procs yet. And the rotation I'm using is 3 cancel, 4 cancel, 2, proc on 5. When you get to tier 3, just squeeze in one more 2 skill. Um, uh, 
the mobs made it so that's gonna happen to you yep i'm gonna keep it anyways the mobs made it so that the proc triggered early there because there were so many bodies but it is what it is but since he almost died that's gonna happen to you attacks are gonna hit you when you're in your iframes or when you have your invincibility or your immunity up and if you can't heal guess what happens over time you're gonna die all right let's see if she can actually take down thanos we do have a lot of pierce on our cards with her five percent pierce that she natively has and my 25 percent from my cards she now has 30 percent pierce all right so do keep that in mind second high well actually it's the highest amount of pierce any character can have without having a reforged ctp to be honest her and null have 30 percent pierce pretty much at all times when i use them okay we gotta dodge that because she can't heal Any purple attack that she gets hit with will be a lasting um, effect on her for the entirety of the fight. So we'll see how long she's able to stay alive. Nice, we propped properly. So love to see it. All right, so we'll just bring out White Fox. Let's see. She might end up becoming ABX meta and replacing Scarlet Witch. So do keep that in mind. And for ABX, her survivability is not going to be an issue. Because if you're able to score over over 7 million ABX, ain't no way your characters are weak enough that they're going to die from the Frost Beast hitting you. It's just not going to happen. Right? But still, that's no excuse for them to not give a character that costs 8,000 plus crystals to unlock. One of the most fundament fundamentally useful abilities in the game. Right? But then again, look at Strife. He doesn't have a heal and he costs a bunch right and he's tier 2 native and whatnot but the game was in a different space when he came out right when he came out there wasn't like a bunch of like um stuff that could penetrate immunity invincibility and all that stuff right now you use an ability or a skill rather against mephisto and you're in an iframe and you have invincibility and immunity up and that man still just shreds you like paper and you're dead in like two seconds so it doesn't matter all all of these effects that you have hold on like invincibility, immunity, all them stuff. That's cool. It's nice to have, but for World Boss Legend and whatnot, bro, it's, it's like you don't even have it, right? It's like you don't even have it. Anybody who plays 20 plus, they know. And realistically, are you building Thena, buying Thena, getting Thena, doing two deluxe packages, burning a ton of energy to use a character on stage one in World Boss? No, obviously not, right? You would expect her to be putting out moonstone level dps and also have better survivability considering she's coming so late right i would and moonstone is a glass cannon and i feel as though she because she doesn't have a heal she could be considered as such all right now she has a great leadership and her rotation is ooh, quite smooth and stuff Despite what it looks like, all you have to do, you can get a uh, tier 3 on the second rotation. If you use the rotation I'm using and then just squeeze in one more skill. But because I don't have the tier 3 unlocked right now, I'm not using it. And also because I'm trying to be safe. Because I have no way to heal, right? So, should be able to clap in here. Yeah, I think I'm going to try her out with a CTP of energy. So look out for that tomorrow, guys. I'll definitely try and get that to you guys. And I'll also give you guys some gameplay with the base kit. Probably a tier 2 and then again a tier 3. See how much she improves damage-wise. We know survivability-wise, uh, it's not going to be pretty in World Boss Legend. I'll tell you that for free because I don't know what these guys were thinking. right? The guaranteed crit rate is nice. Always nice to see that. Especially since I initially thought she was going to be a rage character. And that's my, that might be what they had in mind, but I figured out how to play her with um, a regular damage proc. So 140 proc is what we're using there. She got some physical attack. Do keep in mind that even though she's a universal character, she's a physical universal kind of like Medusa, okay? Uh, or like Angela or somebody like that, all right? So if you look at her skills, one skill doesn't really offer too, too much. Two skill has some defense down. That's cool. That might be useful for um, dispatch. Keep in mind. Unlike Null, who doesn't have any defense down, she has additional pierce and she also has defense down. So that could be very, very useful for some of you guys who are playing dispatch missions. 
but is that a reason for you to get her absolutely not loki is universal and loki doesn't have additional pierce but loki shreds dispatch so yeah, that's definitely not her saving grace or, or at least i'm not going to give her that cop out i'm not going to do it okay anyways additional pierce though is nice and it's nice that she gets a lot of uh crit rate because unlike the other eternals who you need to give them a bunch of crit rate urus for her you don't need to do that right but anyways we're gonna wrap it up right here thank you guys so much for watching she gets accumulation on her uniform and her uniform bonus itself i'll show you guys what it is right it just gives you chain hit damage which i, I shouldn't say it just gives you chain hit damage because it's, it's good right she also gets damage reduction but honestly i feel like it's not there but i guess it's just because she doesn't have a heal so even though you're reducing the damage you're taking you're still taking damage that you cannot heal back from right so that is a bummer so catch you guys in the next one leave me your thoughts <sighs> more gameplay coming on Tina. i'm gone